Hey guys, John Jr. here, bringing you guys another BBR video, this time week 7 against Amo. Let's just all be honest for a second, Amo is ridiculous. He drafts teams as if my 7 year old cousin decided to draft a team, but for some reason, when it's Amo, it works. And that is what I'm scared of today, Amo is one of the most creative players in draft league, and he's not creative just to be creative, just to run heat sets that never work, he runs heat sets that have some sort of purpose that always work and I'm very scared to play Amo. I think I've played him twice in my life and I've lost both times. He's actually the only person to sweep me this generation in draft league with a rev of room. So you never know what to expect when you're going into a game against Amo. This game is very important, has very big playoff implications. At the time of me recording this, there are seven four and two teams, maybe even eight four and two teams. So every game matters. If we lose out, there is a slight chance, not a very good chance, but a slight chance we don't make playoffs. Otherwise, we have to win out to potentially be the number one seed. At the end of the day, does that really matter? No, but I'm not somebody who plays something to lose. I want to get as many wins as I can, and that's what we're gonna try to do today against Amo. Be sure to check him out in the top right hand corner right now. He is a good friend of mine. I really, really like Amo. He's super awesome too. Check out his content if you have not already. He's brought LeChonk twice. But with all that being said, what is this Amo abomination of a team that we are looking at? We're looking at a Terra Flying and Normal Dragonite, one of the scariest Pokemon in the format. A Scizor, which did lose Roost and Morning Sun this generation. A a Hisuian Zoroark, a Paldea Water Tauros, a Florges, a Rotom Fan, Toad's Cruel, Skuntank, Ice Q, Armor Rouge, and of course Lechonk. So looking at the matchup, Amos team obviously is not very good and anybody will tell you that. His team in general is not a good team. Again, Amo is a very, very good player, and I think he's going to do very well, and he has been doing very well with the team. Dragonite is 16-2 right now, and hopefully 16-3 after this week, but we'll, we'll see, because Dragonite is the first Pokemon I want to talk about. That Pokemon gives me a run for my money. There are a number of different sets Amo can bring, because I do have some good checks to physical Dragonite. Special Dragonite, I think, is very possible, with maybe Terabas flying. I think he still packs E-Speed just because Chi and Pao exists with Ice Shard. And then maybe something like Roost and then Earthquake. Just a mixed Dragonite with those four moves does really well, but there's also just so many other options the Dragonite could run. No matter what we do, no matter what we bring, there is a Dragonite set that Amo can bring that can beat whatever we bring. The other Pokemon that I think have to come, I think there's three other Pokemon that guarantee every single time come to this specific matchup. The first of which is Scizor. Scizor helps him revenge a potential Chi and Pao and just in general does really well. We don't have the best answer to Scizor. And this exact matchup actually is why I dropped Salazzo for Dondozo. Salazzo, it did good in this matchup, I won't lie. However, it took over 50% from a banded bullet punch from Scizor. Dondozo helps us mitigate that a little bit, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but Scizor does just do so well, especially if he gets chip on our entire team. The next Pokemon that I think has to come is Hisuian Zoroark. We don't have the best specially defensive answers to Hisuian Zoroark. We have Wochian, but Wochian doesn't have a great matchup, and even if he's just specs and he wants to get chip on us, then he's going to do a lot of damage or if he's modest, which he is going to be, he should be at least in this matchup, he is just going to do way too much damage to our Wuchian. And other than that, we actually don't have a really good switch in. And the last Pokemon that I think always has to come is going to be Toad's Cruel. Toad's Cruel is the only remover on his team because Rotom lost Defog and Scizor lost Defog, and I'm pretty sure Skuntink and Flora just both lost Defog. Toad's Cruel is his only remover, and not only that, it's a remover that beats Goldingo. So I think that is invaluable to this matchup, especially a matchup where I have Glamora, where T-Spikes are really annoying for you, where Spikes are super annoying for you, I think you have to bring Toad Scroll. And just in general, the Pokemon does really, really well. The only great answers we have to it kind of are Cyclozar, uh, Wuchi, and Inkilowatro. And Cyclozar, not, not so much, man, not so much. Other than that, I think the other two slots are up in the air. My prediction for the last two slots are probably Water Paldea Tauros, who doesn't have the best matchup, but it does help him check Chi and Pao, which otherwise he struggles with a lot. And then unfortunately, I'm playing Amo, so I think he's going to bring Ice Q, man. Do I think Ice Q does good into me? No. But do I think Amo can make it work? Unfortunately. So I do think Ice Q will make some sort of an appearance here, unfortunately. As for the team we're bringing, we're starting off like every other week with Chi and Pao. But before I talk about Chi and Pao, I want to say that in general, this team this week is a little uncomfortable for me to play, specifically because it's a very, very hyper offensive team. I am personally more of a balanced player, I like playing with some balance, but we don't have defensive answers to Amo's team at all. Uh, just at all just his team runs over ours offensively so we kind of have to outpace his offense and that's why we are going to be extremely extremely offensive this week in the first pokemon we are running chi and pao but we're running banded for the first time this season crunch sucker ice shard and haze we're a very simple set 
76 HP, max attack, adamant, 180 speed. We can outspeed a Hisuian Zoroark that we did not outspeed Modest just in case he wants to try to catch us speed creeping his creep. I think it's very important she and Pow outspeeds that, especially because we get adamant either way. And then we just went max attack, rest in the HP. He does not have crunch switches on his team. Toro switches in, but it doesn't appreciate Terra Dark Bandit crunches. It takes anywhere between 33 and 40%, depending on the set that he is. That is max HP set if he's not Fizz Def. And after some hazard chip, that is going to start racking up. It doesn't have reliable recovery. It just has leftovers. So Chi and Pao is here to just do as much damage as possible, which it does really well in this game. Our next move is going to be Sucker Punch. This is strictly for the Hisuian Zoroark. I think Zoroark is either going to be Scarf or Specs in this matchup, and whenever it locks into a move, we're going to Sucker Punch and we're going to kill it, hopefully, as long as we know which Pokemon it is. Ice Shard is here just for some form of priority if he's Terra Flying Dragonite without E Speed. And then our last thoughts, Haze, in case things get a little bit dicey with the Ice Q, and I think he's Belly Drum, which I don't know if he's gonna be, but we really didn't need a fourth move. I'm gonna be honest, we didn't need another move besides Crunch. Crunch is just so unbelievably free in this matchup. A second Pokemon is gonna be very similar to Chi and Pao, and again, it is gonna be the second Pokemon we typically bring in Goldingo, Golden Boy. If you look at Amos' team, he does not have a switch into dual stabs Goldingo, and Goldingo comes in super easily on a lot of different Pokemon. It can hard switch on the Dragonite, it can come in if he brings Floridus, it can come in on Ice Cube, and we have a lot of momentum on this team to get Goldingo in for free and just fire off a Make It Rain choice specs. Make It Rain does like 50% to an offensive Scizor, which I think he's gonna be in this matchup. So if we can position both Chi and Pao and Goldingo really well, we are going to run away with how much damage we can do. We brought Shadow Ball, it's a similar thing to Chi and Pao. We really only need Make It Rain, but Shadow Ball is here in case he does bring Armor Rouge and because of Tauros Paldea Water. And then our last two moves, his team, the main threats are physical, so we brought Reflect just in case. And then we have Memento because we don't need a last move. And who knows, maybe Memento could get us into a position with Chi and Pao to win the game. Very unlikely we ever click it, but we didn't need four moves. As for our EVs, very similar to Chi and Pao, we are 32 HP, max special attack, and 224 speed timid. The speed allows us to outspeed Dragonite, which is very crucial because if he's not a Dragon Dance set, we can outpace him and fire up a Specs and make it rain and just obliterate him. And the game plan with these two Pokemon, these first two Pokemon, Chi and Pao and Goldingo, is very, very simple get them in as soon as possible and do as much damage as we can. The next Pokemon is going to be the defensive backbone of our team and really the only defensive pivot that we have on the team. It's going to be Dondozo with Rest, Sleep Talk, Yawn, and Body Press. We are running leftovers and we are mostly physically defensive, but we can take two Terra Blast Flyings from the Dragonite. We are Yawn because we're bringing Toxic Debris Glamora and both Scizor and Dragonite, the two things that this is primarily going to attempt to check, do not get Toxic, then we're able to fire off a Yawn and force uncomfortable switches. And then we're body press because body press is just the best attacking move into this team. We're not going to stand on Hisui and Zoroark. And if we do, I guess we're going to try to yawn it. But we have other options for Hisui and Zoroark, so this Pokemon is not here for that. Next up, I heard you guys talking down on me for not bringing Cyclozar for a month and a half. So we are bringing Vroom, AV Vroom. No, that's actually not why we're bringing him. We're bringing Cyclozar here because it is one of our only ways to kind of pivot into the Hisui and Zoroark. Like I said before, I do heavily anticipate him to be either Scarf or Specs, more so Scarf, and Cyclozar helps us pivot in on the Zoroark and see what move it locks into. Other than that, it is going to be here strictly for momentum. It's a very good momentum on in this matchup. We're able to pivot into Goldingo on a lot of things and pivot into Chi Impao maybe. We have Knockoff to remove items, Rapid Spin, because he, if he does bring Toad Scroll, he is gonna probably be some sort of stack, and then Dragon Tail to prevent Dragonite or Scizor from setting up in our faces. We have 248 HP, 76 attack, 120 split depth with 64 speed jolly. We can live two non-specs modest hyper voices from the Zoroark after rocks. It's very complicated, but essentially we can outspeed him, creeping us, creeping him, creeping the Hisui and Zoroark. It's very complicated. Essentially, if he decides to be timid Hisui and Zoroark with a little bit of speed, just in case our Chi Pao is trying to outspeed him, this Cyclozar should theoretically still outspeed that Pokemon. And this guy's only purpose, his only, only purpose is to switch in to the Hisuian Zorark, but he can also switch into the Toad Scroll. I did forget to mention that. He can switch into the Toad Scroll and make the Toad Scroll a little bit uncomfortable with Rapid Spin knockoff and U-turn. Our next Pokemon is gonna be pivotal for our game plan. We are Shimmy, the Glamora, with the Focus Sash. Once again, Stealth Rock, Spikes, Power Gym, and Spiky Shield. We really only need Power Gym in this matchup. It hits everything except Toad Scroll, who we're not staying in on, and the Tauros, who we're not staying in on. I decided to bring Hazard Stack this week because Amos' only remover is Toad Scroll, and while I do definitely think it has to come, if at any point he lets it go down, 
then we're in a really good spot. And it also forces him to get some rapid spins off and then we're able to pivot into certain Pokemon very, very easily. We are Sash, not because this is gonna be our lead, but because he only has one setter on his entire team in Toes Cruel. I don't think they're really gonna be hazards on our side of the field for most of the game because we can pretty reliably remove them with our Cyclozar. So having the Sash to potentially revenge a Dragon Dance to Dragonite is gonna be very, very important. And then we're Spiky Shield because again, we didn't really need a fourth move and it helps us get toxic damage on other Pokemon as well as see if other Pokemon are Zoroark. Or 48 HP, 252 special attack, 208 speed timid. This simply allows us to outspeed the Dragonite and we went the rest into special attack because we are focus sash. The EVs are a little bit lame this week, but I think the team functionality is definitely there. And then lastly, we're bringing a fan favorite. We're bringing Kilowatcho to another week. This Pokemon has just been surprising me and making me so happy that I picked him week in and week out. We are safety goggles to specifically switch in on that Toes Troll safely. I don't know if he'll be Spore, but just in case he is, we can switch in on that Pokemon. And we are Roost, Hurricane, Thunderbolt, and Volt Switch. He does not switch into dual stabs very well at all. His ground type is actually Toad's Cruel. So if we can pivot this, even if we force a rapid spin on the Toad's Cruel, if we can get this Pokemon in on the Toad's Cruel, we can just fire up a Hurricane and get some massive damage off. Not only that, but if he does bring Rotom Fan for whatever reason, which I really don't see happening, we are Volt Absorb just in case. I consider going competitive just for the Tauros Paldea Water, but I feel like it's very unlikely that a situation ever arises where we get intimidated, so I valued the Volt Absorb a little bit more. We are 24 defense, 252 special attack, 212 spadef with 20 speed timid. And I'm gonna make a video about this later, but essentially we're 20 speed timid and not like max modest because this allows us to get one singular extra special attack point versus going however much EVs we needed to go the exact same number of 320. It's complicated. I know what I said just doesn't make sense. I'll, I'll make a video on it eventually. It's, it's EV efficiency, essentially. This speed allows us, we were aggressive with this one, to outspeed the modest Hisuian Zoroark. We can live a modest non-spec Zoroark Hyper Voice after rocks. We can live two Adamant Banded Scizor Bullet Punches and Roost in its face. And then we went the rest into Special Attack. Kilowattro is pivotal to our game plan, and I actually do think that we are going to lead this Pokemon. I don't think there's really a Pokemon that Amo could lead to put me in a bad spot. And it also allows us to pivot on whatever the Pokemon is. And if it's slower than us, we could break the Hisui and Zorox illusion. If it's faster than us, then we know it's Scarf and we guarantee live a hit. So I'm pretty confident this is gonna be our lead and I'm pretty confident in the team. We're just a spike stack team with hyper offense, get Goldingo in, get Chi in power in, try to do as much damage as possible. Like I said, it's a little bit of an uncomfortable play style for me. So we're gonna see how well it goes. And Amo's a very good player. So I expect to see some things that I was not anticipating. That's all from me guys, so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready for this match. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, it means the world to me. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you have not already. And thank you so much for watching. And for now guys, this has been John Jr. signing off.